Hi everyone, in this video we are going to take the next step here and start to actually write some SQL queries to understand how we can do different things in SQL Server like creating objects, deleting, update, selecting, uh, really the basics. Uh, so, let's see. First up what we'll do is show how you can actually switch databases by using SQL. And the syntax for that is use. And since we are already in AdventureWorks, let's just go to master. And then underneath we'll say go. And go is just a terminology in here. It's the default to end the batch, to end that block of code. So go. So now we can see we switch to master. And if we want to switch back to AdventureWorks, and you'll see SQL Server autocompletes a lot of times, which is really nice. Go. So now we're back in AdventureWorks. So anything after that, we'd be working in that database. So we can see here, we did a select statement in the previous video, but just as a reminder, select all from, let's say, this table here. And you'll notice here in AdventureWorks, there's a lot of schemas that they use. So human resources, person, production. It's just another way of kind of compartmentalizing the data, structuring it in a certain way. You can have different securities on different schemas, allow certain users in, etc. Uh, that's a little bit outside of the scope of this video, but let's just say, uh, just to see some data here. Here we are. If you only want to select a certain part of the query to run, you could do this, and that works. Uh, so, all right, so now let's actually create our own schema for the, the purpose of our demo. The terminology for that here, or the syntax, I should say, is create schema. And then the name of it. So for us, we can do demo. Success. So uh, really, at this point, we're not going to see a whole lot. But once we, if we decide we want to add a table, we can add it and we'll see it as its own schema. So why don't we go ahead and do that? Let's create a table. A basic table and and this table is something that we can use for those of you following along in the video series we'll use this as we go further along into different aspects of of uh, the sql server business intelligence overall suite here so the syntax here create table and what we'll call this one here uh, we'll use this schema so demo dot rep performance is what we're going to call this one and now the next part of this here is, let's give ourselves some space. We need to indicate the columns. We'll give it an ID, the name of the column, and then the data type, int. We are gonna set this as the primary key, meaning it's gotta be unique. This will be the way the table is ordered. It's gonna give it structure, and it's gonna add a constraint to make sure that this is always a unique row. And by doing identity, one, one, is essentially SQL Server's way of auto incrementing. So this ID value, every time a new record is added, it's going to add one to the value. So the first one will be one, the second will be two, then three, four, etc. starting at one. Okay, the next one we'll do employee ID as an integer, sales quantity as an integer, sales revenue and this we're going to use the data type money that's built in which is nice and order year which we'll store as an integer so now if we select and run this we've created this table rep performance in this schema demo and we can see this here if we go to tables right click refresh there it is it's now in here stored our primary key. It, it knows it because we indicated it. If we were to select from it, there's nothing in it, but we could. It already recognizes it. It's just an empty table, but the, the structure is there. So that's done. All right, so why don't we insert some rows into it? I'm going to hide this bottom screen, and you can do that by pressing Control and R just to give us some more room. Now the syntax here, insert, into, and then the schema and the table name, demo, 
performance. We need to specify specifically what columns we're inserting. So for us, we actually, in this case, we don't need to insert an ID because it already has this auto incrementing value. So we don't actually have to do it. It, it is automatically going to just add one to whatever was <clears throat> the last value. But we do have to indicate the names of the columns that we do want to add. So let's just go through the list. Employee ID, sales quantity, sales rev, order year. Next is, there's two things you could do here. You could do values or you could do select. We'll go through values here. We'll just do, let's just do one row. Let's just make some stuff up. 11, 250, 2000, yeah, just, just making it up. Now let's insert. Again, insert into schema.table the names of the columns and the values. These indicate which value for which column we're doing. One row affected. Let's see what happened. Select all. There it is. And you see here, ID is one because that primary key, auto incrementing, starting at one, incrementing by one. So if we actually ran this again, think about what you would expect. <clears throat> we're inserting these values, but we didn't say ID. So what's going to happen to it? Let's see. Same values, auto incrementing by one, it gave it the next value. Now I have a couple things here I can just copy and paste over. Give us some more. Let's get rid of this guy. Now we're adding some more. Five rows. We're adding all this stuff here. And here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's auto incrementing these values and and putting the information in. So let's say now we want to do a select but only for a certain condition, that would be introducing the where clause. And we would have to say where a particular column meets a certain condition. So uh, let's say our sales quantity is less than 150. We get these three rows. So all these are less than 150. Do greater, let's see what shows up again. Same thing. Not going to get too far into that. Just, just wanted to point it out. Now, another thing you could do is delete records rather than select them. So the syntax is pretty similar uh, for deleting. Let's go down a little bit. It would be delete from, you don't actually specify columns here because it's going to delete the entire row. Delete from, again, we'll do the same table. And let's just do that criteria where sales quantity less than 150. So again, if we select this, we'll see what these values are. And when we run this, we would expect all of these to now have been deleted. So let's run that three rows affected. And we could actually just run this again. We should not see anything because we just deleted them. If we just highlight this part, remove the where. There we go. This is all that's left. So now instead of deleting, another option here is something called truncate. And truncating a table is clearing out all of the values. It's not deleting the table itself. It's not deleting the actual object of the table, which would be what we would call dropping a table. But in this case, we're truncating, we're clearing out all of the records. So let's See what that looks like. Truncate table. Rep performance. And now if we select all, all of the rows are gone. That's because truncate clears them all out. So let's say we reinserted them. Select. All the records are there. But if we truncate, now they're all gone. 
So the last part here we'll do is let's do another insert, but using a select statement. For the sake of time, I'm just going to copy and paste some syntax that I already wrote. And we'll, uh, we'll take a look at this. So again, the same structure here, insert into schema.table, identifying the columns we're going to insert, except for that auto incrementing ID that's assumed. And here we're doing some joins onto existing tables, getting uh, what I have found to be the employee ID, what I'm considering the sales quantity and the revenue. And I, I encourage you to take some time yourself to dig into these tables and understand it. I'll have a link of the data dictionary that's provided for AdventureWorks, which really helps figure out what's connected to what, what can join where, what it means. So let's just select this before we insert it to see what it looks like. Just to give an idea of the data, employee ID, quantity, revenue, year, So now let's insert this into our table, running the whole thing. It's just as if it was a values, but instead we're doing a select now. That result set, 62 rows. Now let's see. Here we go, all of that data has been inserted. And again, if you look at the ID, it's auto incrementing all the way down. We want to say we wanted to order this by employee ID. Let's just get a little structure here. Order by the specific column. Let's do employee ID. No. So uh, this kind of is a good. This is a good transition into the next topic here, which is the update statement. So let's say we wanted to not have this null here for employee ID. We know how to find them. We could say select from here where employee ID is null. This is slightly different than equals, but again, take a look at that further outside of this video if you need some more clarification on the null. Select all where is null. We have these values. Now, if we want to update these records, the syntax would be like this. If we want to say anytime employee ID is null, change it to uh, let's just say zero. The syntax here would be update and you indicate the table. So demo, again, demo.rep performance. Set, instead of select, set the column, in this case, employee ID equal to the value, let's say zero, that we could do, you know, 999 or whatever. We're just going to hard code the value to zero. And if we were to run this just as it is, it would set every single value to zero in the entire table. But because we're only, we only want to do in this condition, we can add the where condition where employee ID is null. So it's similar to this select. We're just qualifying what we want to update. So let's run this four rows. We would assume that it would be these four. So let's see if we select this now, there's nothing because we just updated those. They're no longer null, they're now zero. So let's do select all of the same one we just did, order by employee ID. <clears throat> and there we have it. The nulls are now zeros, but still, in ascending order. All right, so that about covers it for the basic, uh, the basic overview of, of interacting with SQL, uh, SQL Server objects. We went over selecting, creating schemas, using databases, truncating, deleting, insert, select, uh, update. So thanks for watching. We'll continue a little bit further on the next video, get more involved with some stored procedures and views and functions, and we will continue there. Thanks for watching.